First Thessalonians chapter four, that's our reading for today. Um, I think this is really needed um, reading, really good reminders for us in here as always, but let's really take notice of our reading today. Thank you so much for joining me. First Thessalonians chapter four, it's beginning verse four, as we begin a new week in God's word together. The Bible says, finally then brethren, we request and exhort you in the Lord Jesus, that as you receive from us instruction as to how you ought to walk and please God, just as you actually do walk, that you excel still more. For you know what commandments we give you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that is, that you abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you know how to possess his own vessel in honor and sanctification and honor. Not in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God. And that no man transgress and defraud his, his brother in the matter, because the Lord is the avenger in all these things, just as we also told you before and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for the purpose of impurity, but in sanctification. So he who rejects this is not rejecting man, but the God who gives his Holy Spirit uh, to you. Uh, Paul urges these brethren to live their lives in a way that pleases God, acknowledging the fact that they were currently doing that, uh, but that they would excel still more. You know, Paul emphasizes again the word he taught them by was by the Lord's authority, not his authority, not his uh, uh, opinions. And Paul says unequivocally in verse 3 that it is the will of God, he says, your sanctification that you abstain from sexual immorality. You know, if, if ever there was a time to use the off-quoted statement, the more things change, the more they stay the same, right? Many, um, a good man and, and good woman for that matter, has succumbed to the strong temptation of sexual immorality. You know, sexual immorality, it was a problem then, and brethren, it remains a problem now. I'm not going to take the time this morning to explore the history of the time in the Greco-Roman world, but I can tell you this. It was a culture that celebrated sensuality and sexuality with, with little to no restraint. Like today, sexual immorality, in many ways, it was celebrated. So the idea of abstaining from sexual immorality, denying lust, denying passion, like today, would have been a radical teaching. You know, in the Greek, the meaning of that phrase, sexual immorality, it's the idea of adultery. It's premarital sexual relations. It's extra a marital sexual relations. It's any sexual activity that takes place outside the confines of marriage between a man and a woman. That's the idea here. So what are we to do, brethren? Paul says, abstain. Control yourself. Don't take advantage of your brother or sister in this matter. And keep in mind, if you reject this teaching, Paul makes clear you're not rejecting me, you're rejecting God himself. Now, I think we all understand that sexual immorality, it's a serious issue. I think we understand that sexual immorality is sin, that it displeases God. I think we all understand that God will hold the sexual and moral accountable if they refuse to repent. But I want to make a connection that Paul, led by the Spirit, makes here. Sexual immorality, make no mistake about it, it's selfish. It's absolutely selfish. Look at verse 6 again. And then no one violate the rights and take advantage of his brother or sister in the matter, because the Lord is the avenger in all these things. Just as we told you previously and solemnly warned you, for God has not called us for impurity, but in sanctification. When one acts and participates in sexually immoral things, someone is going to get hurt. For the married person, your spouse, right? For the parent, your children. For the unmarried, your future spouse, possibly. You defraud, you violate the other person you're involved with. Now, how many people have been violated or defrauded for another's selfish lust? Now, I realize it takes two to tango. I understand personal responsibility, and certainly this goes both ways. This is not a man issue or a woman issue. Paul uses a Greek word here that, that isn't gender specific. So what's the point? The point is very simple. The child of God should never participate in any activity that would cause another to sin. That's the opposite of love, that we are to show our fellow human beings. You know, agape love is unselfish. This is the opposite of that. Hebrews 13 at verse 4, let me remind you, marriage is to be held in honor among all, and the marriage bed is to be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers. God's way works. 
It works every time and in every circumstance. Brethren, let's be careful about what we let in, what we watch, what we listen to, what, who we listen to, the situation we put our, ourselves in. Remember what we talked about the other night in, in our Wednesday uh, uh, midweek Bible study from Psalm 1, right? Men and women alike, be extremely careful. Be transparent by way of your time spent with the opposite sex. Who you text? Who you message on Facebook? Husband and wives, get on the same page. Treat one another the way you want to be treated. See to uh, one another's needs. And brethren, put those hedges around your marriage with the understanding, as the wise man tells us, Proverbs 7 and verse 24, Now therefore, my sons, listen to me and pay attention to the words of my mouth. Do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. Don't stray to her paths. For many are the victims she has brought to ruin, and numerous are those who were slaughtered by her. Her house is the way to shield, descending to the chambers of death. The context of Proverbs 7, you remember. It's adultery. It's sexual immorality. You got some time to go over and read Proverbs 7. Let's get strong. Let's get wise. God's word is the answer. Daily time in God's word. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we are so thankful that you have given us the truth about these things that Satan and his operatives that the world lies to us about. Father, we recognize as we look around that man's way it doesn't work. And Father, your ways do. Father, we recognize that we can control ourselves. Father, we recognize self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. Father, help us to have the desire to be in your word, to allow your word to penetrate our hearts and to change us. Your Holy Spirit to dwell within us through your word, Father, to change us, to allow us to to navigate through these temptations that are thrown at us, understanding, Father, that, that these desires, these temptations, they can be strong at times, but help us, Father, understanding that you always give us that way of escape. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.